the sketch of the sketch shows the graph of this is paper one November 2009. Remember, 2009, three graphs was also in paper one. No more, only in paper two. Right. The sketch shows the graphs of f of x equals q plus cos x. What does q do? Ah, shift up, I know. What does p do? Period. Write down the values of p and q. Let's see. Let's go with Q first. Q is F. There's my F. Cos normally starts there. At this, can you? I hope you can see the arrow. F normally starts there. What did I do? It moved up one position. You know this. So Q must be one. And let's look at P quickly. There is Starts there, one period ends at 180 degrees. We had a lot of them, so P must be 2. Write down the range of F. Range means all possible Y values. The range of F, the lowest value of F is 0, highest value is 2, so the values lie between 0 and 2. 6.3 Point one is the ugly one, and I want to, to tackle that one with you. 6.3.1. They ask you, explain how you would solve the question 2x minus 1 times cos x equals 1. Oh, 2 sine x. But sorry, people, that should have been sine x minus 1. Now we don't have we don't have any of these graphs. So I need to jippo this stuff so that I can see the original graphs. So the only way I can do is remove my brackets. And I'm going to run now because we're running out of time. Two sine x cos x minus cos x equals 1 and then I can take out a common factor and somehow you must try to end up with the two original questions. Once you are there, the answer will be in your face. And question 6.3.2. Okay, you'll notice, guys, let's round off. You'll notice that in all of these examples that we worked through, we started from the basic graph, we used the basic graph and adapted that to get to our new graph. You also realize that with all the interpretation questions, it was a blend of all your previous knowledge. It normally brings in a little, a little bit of special angles. It brings in your knowledge about three equations, double angles. So therefore, in order to survive, you need to know that this is not a unit in isolation. All your previous knowledge need to be pulled in to get to the end. I hope that this would help you in preparation for your exam. The idea for me was not to work through all the questions, but to guide you through some of them and give you, leave you with a thought so that you can go home this weekend when you're totally bored and then go and work out through all these questions once again because today you had the opportunity to write down tips and when you do it on your own, see if you can then do it on your own. So all I have to do to say further is good luck for this upcoming exam and I hope you will get 22 marks for trigonometrical graphs in this exam. So good luck. Until the next time, goodbye.